Um, Stuart Tonkin, Managing Director of Northern Star Resources. He's a mining sector leader with more than 25 years experience as an operator, contractor and senior executive. Joined Northern Star as COO in 2013, appointed CEO in 2016 and has been MD uh, since 2021. So Stu's played a leading role in Northern Star's exceptional growth to become an ASX50 company and one of the world's leading sustainable gold producers. Over to you, Stuart. Uh, thanks very much, um, Jane, and thanks very much, Canaccord, major sponsor for Digg Diggers and Dealers. And I'd extend that as well to, to Sharon Miles, the whole uh, Diggers committee that's it's re reliably delivered this for over 30 years uh, and is so proud that it's happening here in, in our backyard of Kalgoorlie, the city of uh, Kalgoorlie, Boulder. Uh, I do encourage you to, to get through the, the breezy uh, wind out there and get to the lookout at KCGM. Um, you'll be able to see all of the progress and activity I'm going to talk, talk about to, to you today. Um, last year I joked that it felt like uh, I was standing here as, as Stephen Bradbury. Um, you know, after decades of, of, of training, um, the, the field thinned out. Uh, I was managed to, to skate through and collect the gold medal. Um, but really today, uh, what I want to demonstrate is the Olympic effort that the Northern Star team has delivered over the last 12 months through a very dynamic and challenging environment uh, to deliver our results and to set up and position the business in a really, really healthy state, uh, much better than it's ever been before. So very proud to be representing the Northern Star team here today. So to restate our purpose as a business, uh, it is to generate superior returns for our shareholders and we do that through our expertise of our 6,000 people strong contracting and owner operating teams across our geology, our mining, our processing and everything in between to support that business. Uh, we are a responsible producer. I'll give you some content to how we think, how we act. Um, but it is important that for our employees, for our stakeholders, our communities that we operate, both here domestically and, and in North America, um, we operate responsibly. We have significant organic growth uh, and we are in a strategy for profitable organic growth uh, over a five year journey that we are delivering on. And we are generating significant cash flows and growing those cash flows that fund all of our activities, our organic growth, our exploration efforts that grow resources and reserves, uh, as well as our growing dividends, and I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of, of what they, they are. So very well positioned. And ultimately on those world-class assets, we deliberately targeted multi-million ounce systems positioned in tier one locations. So we have a simplified business uh, with these world-class assets in Australia and in the US in Alaska. And it is just gold. If you like gold and you, you, you listen to a lot of the gold bulls here saying what they expect to happen next, um, I'm going to say the same. It goes up. I don't know how much, but there's no reason why gold isn't solid for the near and long term uh, prospects. When you look at our attitude towards our people, um, we, we're very passionate about leading in our commitment to our health, our safety and our training investment across our, our teams. And that's not just physical safety, that's psychosocial safety, mental health, and not just repairing damage, like absolutely working at our best, uh, giving people that, that ability to, to perform uh, in a high performing operation. Um, we want to do that through that focused lens as one of our core values of respect, but, but generating and building those respectful and inclusive cultures and environments so that everyone can come to work and operate at their best. We demonstrate that in a safety aspect, physical safety aspect, by sector leading performance. Uh, we're less than a third of the industry indexes and we actually influence improvement uh, given the numbers that we contribute to those indexes, we improve that uh, year on year. In the investment in training for our people, uh, we do, we've done that because we've uh, had to, we want to, uh, it's asked of and expected of uh, our people. So across our business at the moment, 180 uh, new starter kind of trainee people. Uh, we've got there those 90 graduates, 50 apprentices, represents about 10% of our team. Uh, and it's important that we've developed and grown that. At a necessity in a void of 20,000 jobs, resource jobs in a, in a lockdown state in the last two years in Western Australia, 
I think everyone had to do it. You couldn't just get someone off the shelf, you had to build it yourself, uh, compounded by the fact that a growing business and, and, and the headwinds that were faced, um, this is a key discipline that we've, we've done throughout the cycles and on the journey of a growing business. Um, proudly, we just established a, a new facility here in Kalgoorlie, one of the, uh, another one uh, out on Boulder Road, if you're driving out that way, a Northern Star Mining Services hub. Uh, in there, we'll be able to train our apprentices, the sort of 16, 17 year olds that have just left school in the gold fields um, before they turn 18, get into the mines. Um, we're able to get them through that facility and, and get them into the trades. Uh, also there are training facilities, um, simulators to get people to, to learn the equipment before they physically get on it. Uh, we currently got our fleet for our Porphyry Underground parked up out the front, so the amount of people that stop there and are getting photos with their kids and their family and explaining what they do, uh, very proud to be, to be representing that on that, um, that shop front you'll see out on Boulder Road. We're also inv investing in that technology, the, the best in class fleet um, that really drives the performance coupled with the skills uh, that we have embedded in our business. And we absolutely recognise that the, su the success of Northern Star is driven by our people. Uh, in our communities, and again, all the presentations will talk about that con contribution and it's fantastic, the resource sector absolutely um, pulls their weight in this regard. But it's not just you know, donation sponsorships, the like, it's the absolute economic benefit our industry delivers to our economies. Uh, very proud to say, you know, Northern Star's efforts uh, through jobs, through taxes, through royalties, through extended services that uh, fit in and around our businesses uh, here, in, here in the gold fields, in, in northern parts of the gold fields, Northern Territory, the interior of Alaska. Um, it's over $3 billion of economic ad in the last year of the activity that we've done. And really proud to say it on mines that were typically had a short mine life, even perhaps we're going into closure, that reversal and that investment to, to pick them up, extend them and to keep that livelihood back in there. And we can see the, the performance that the sector delivered through the, the pandemic uh, and how really held the nation strong um, for the ability to, to manage through that, through, through the efforts of, of, of everyone that's been presenting and, and the rest of the efforts throughout the state. Um, also in uh, Indigenous engagement uh, through our community inclusion projects, health, education, these are the, the themes where we, we spend effort and invest. Um, and we do it proactively, uh, re revisiting our commercial arrangements, our, our current agreements um, with, our, with our native title landholders where we, where we operate. Uh, proactively working to modernise those agreements uh, and, and working with them as being key. So to talk with the year that's been, uh, and, and I don't want to put a, a negative tone on it, but it, it, was a, it was a fascinating yet challenging uh, and very, very dynamic uh, year that we've just operated through. It doesn't need to be explained as excuses, but it absolutely needs to be understood. It is reality. If you look at the, the two main components in this sector, um, on the people side, you know, the rapid uh, turnover, um, the vacancy related to illness and COVID, the, the, the pressure um, around wages in, in increasing. Even for us as a growing business, wanting to build the team, develop the team, new starters, trainees, all of those things that dilute uh, what your typical plans and, and, and spreadsheet, uh, you know, mining is going to be, those have been the real challenges uh, across the last 12 months into the materials, the things that feed into the fundamental cost structure of our businesses, your fuels, your energies, your, your steels, the escalation, scarcity, logistics, delays, those things have happened and all of the companies that are presenting have been faced with those and they're all doing everything they can uh, to manage those things. So you see it in your lives, um, reflect on that in business, uh, it's magnified um, and think that people are working hard to, to manage and control those inputs. Um, for Northern Star, absolutely proud that we have adapted to that environment. The team is resilient. We're very disciplined in our capital allocation in that regard and focused on that value over volume uh, concept that we that work on. And ultimately that culminated in delivering our FY22 guidance, kept our major projects on track. Uh, we continued to generate those cash flows that funded that and we absolutely grew and enhanced our team skills throughout that dynamic period. So pleased to be leading uh, that charge throughout that period. Our commitment then is, you know, absolutely continuing to deliver the, the value creation that Northern Stars set on. So, you know, in the journey that we've been, we've bought some assets, we've sold some assets, we've paid out dividends nearly eight, 870 odd million dollars over the journey. Uh, last year alone, 1.56 million ounces 
generating over a billion dollars of cash earnings. So if you look at the health of our business today, the enhancement of integrating and stabilising and, and delivering on our growth strategy, we sit in a very enviable and, st and solid position. Net cash over $500 million, liquidity $1.5 billion, underpinned by a future and outlook, 56 million ounce resource, 20 million ounce reserve, really solid position with what, what we're going into. Um, into that plan, the strategic plan I delivered last year with a five year outlook, things did change, but we recut and re-looked at you know, what is driving the value, what is, what is getting to that final outcome that we want to achieve. And we've made significant progress in the 12 months. The fleet delivered at KCGM, you can go to the lookout and watch it operating, um, seeing the material movements increase. The TBA mill expansion I'll talk to shortly, 95% complete and, and delivered. The mill expansion at Pogo delivered and the mining volume's increasing there. And you'll see over those years that ultimately we're getting to this very sustainable 2 million ounce place, 1.8 to 2.2, uh, three to five assets, but this is a very sustainable, um, you know, healthy business uh, that is self-funded and is self-generating its growth. Importantly, focusing on that lower cost um, space on the, the lower end of the cost curve, and that has been the true challenge this year. So we're, we're not sitting idle and looking for the opportunities to continue to, to improve on those things. The growth in Kalgoorlie, Kalgoorlie um, delivered about 900,000 ounces this, um, this last year, but the, the growth is at KCGM. If you go there, you see a lot of progress. Um, the east wall remediation is well underway. Volumes have increased to 66 million tonnes. Um, and you'll see that, that containment bund at the bottom in that picture. Um, and then we're bringing that scar down and getting through that very efficiently, ultimately to get into the high grade in the Golden Pike to then supplement uh, that into the plant to grow us back out to 650,000 ounces. The focus this year is more of that at KCGM, growing Mount Charlotte. Uh, in the region, we're going to start a new underground up at uh, Karasu Dam called Porphyry. Uh, we're also, from a, from a, through the value lens, uh, we're putting the Jubilee plant on a care and maintenance basis and trucking that ore to our Kanana Bell mill. So it seems counterintuitive, but at the moment, simplifying the business, it generates more cash, keeps us focused, um, utilises the, the, the people redeployed across our operations, keeps the mine lean and fit, and we truck that ore out, which is another demonstration of, uh, of value over volume. The life at KCGM through the lens that Northern Star bought this, the underground focus is phenomenal. Uh, and this, the progress that's been made here, there's two simple stories that, it's a very big place, but the, these two simple stories tell it. That Mount Charlotte mine at the top end of Hannon Street, the head frame that you see there, underground uh, one kilometre, that mine's run for nearly 60 years and produced over five million ounces. We've established drill drives at the bottom at the 32 level. We've been drilling that out. There's no geological reason that, it, that, that ceases. It's really been the economics of the day. This wasn't produced at those levels for 25 years when the gold price was about $450 Aussie dollars an ounce. So you can understand why this mine has a bright future and we're investing in it. The stuff under the, the main super pit, that quadrant that we put in the new portals last year, we've got the drill drives in, we've started drilling that. Um, phenomenal job of CAUD here, they've done a phenomenal job in the diamond drilling, getting through the voids, getting through the old workings and drilling um, to the next one, through the next void, into the next one and actually tagging out the extension of these, um, these systems throughout the pit so it's not shattered by, by an old stope. Uh, and that's given us five million ounces, we've grown it from four to, four to five million ounces of inferred resources just in that small quadrant um, in that northwestern wall under the Fimiston. So, we're going through the feasibility stages of uh, very bulk, low-cost um, mining uh, that's an underground for the future. So the real story of the super pit um, is a super underground, and you're going to have uh, multiple, multiple vo increasing volumes uh, that are going to come and feed that plant. Mount Charlotte's been, uh, you know, that, that mine that's been running five days a week and, and kept there as a, um, you know, a bit of a sleeper, um, we've rapidly turned that around. We'll double the volumes from this mine in the next few years, uh, investing heavily, as I said, from that drill platform. But watch this space. It's a really exciting opportunity. Uh, and I was joking to someone earlier that it, it was quicker to get from, from here to the head frame down to the 32 level than it was to drive from City Beach to Subiaco. And, and it's fascinating that this is on our doorstep and that you can, you can live here, work here, uh, and, and it's r literally under the town, uh, and it's a huge, it's got huge life in front of it. 
Now north to the Yandle operation, obviously we have very productive, profitable um, operation at Jundee in the north part of the Yandle, supplemented by, um, we have some open pits, Julius was, was well delivered this year, good partners um, uh, that, are, that have been helping delivering that through McMahon, Emico, uh, good contracts that have helped us there, Burncut's reliably giving us the underground performance at Jundee. Our Northern Star Mining Services team are rapidly developing the Ramon underground. They've been developing that this year and bringing it into commercial production. Uh, alone, they got 500 metres last month. Um, they are accelerating and compressing the timeline to bring that into production. But it's really about the south, the, the production that um, we're currently producing 3 million tonnes per annum plant at Thunderbox. We're doubling that capacity to six. Uh, GR Engineering Services have delivered that 95% complete. Phenomenal project on time, on schedule, uh, and we're commissioning it this quarter. So that's a that's a big a big deal to have achieved, and we're really at the early stages of ramping up Thunderbox to the south. Uh, second to that is the Aurelia Pit, which is located near Bronzewing, Mount McClure. That'll come in to development this year. With so it'll it'll add to about a third of the feed in the south uh, next financial year. So they're the activities that are occurring in Yandel. Now north to Alaska, and I, I literally wanted to, to spend 25 minutes just talking to you about this. Uh, and less about the project, but more about the team and the team's effort for delivering this project. So there's been lots of commentary on our quarterly calls and questions, uh, and it feels like my eight-year-old in the back of the seat, are we there yet? Um, we are there. We are there. We are, we're delivering on the strategy that we always set out, and it's been four years, and it's been challenging, but it is phenomenal that Pogo is, is literally showing everyone what we've seen all along. So the delivery that's been you know, quarter on quarter built out through the year, uh, I've got a little box there that shows the 300,000 ounce run rate. For the second half of the year, we've delivered 250,000 ounce run rate. Uh, and it's that early lead indicator of getting the development into the mine, opening up the stoping fronts, and then getting the higher proportion of low cost, low cost stoping tons into that feed. But key to us has been that happy place inside that band, which is 1,500 metres, 75,000 ounces a quarter. Um, we've been overachieving with the development in the last couple of quarters to catch up. Uh, we've saturated with people, equipment, um, when we've got that, that relief and that capacity there to do so. So the, the team in Alaska have been tirelessly, continually improving and, and, and driving that performance up. Um, it's so great to be reporting, you know, we're there. And, and what we have that outlook for, for next year. So it is now about stabilising, optimising, uh, pulling away some of the safety net in, in added resources, which will ultimately bring the costs out of this asset, um, but underpinned by a phenomenal uh, resource base. Um, another simple highlight there is the, the maiden resource on Good Pasta, 1.1 million ounces at 10.3 grams, just on the other side of the river, which we can access from the underground uh, it's less than a kilometre away from the main mine. So it's an impressive field. Uh, I know it's been a long time coming, um, but I'm super pleased to be able to represent uh, and, and say thanks to our North American counterparts that are added that and showing the class of this asset uh, on a global, global state. Look, across uh, the business, and we've heard um, commentary and progress around, uh, obviously, the environmental, um, you know, the E of the ESG, and efforts that are going in the way for decarbonisation. For us as a gold miner, where we operate, um, the process uh, is well understood, and I guess, you know, it, it's in a, in a way it's an advantage that we identify and understand that 70% of our emissions uh, are from uh, purchased or generated energy and power that feeds into our mines and our mills. And then the second stage um, of, of reduction in that regard is around electrification uh, fixed um, carbon intensive energy sources to, to be removed or replaced with renewable. So the efforts across all of our operations is around known technology to replace um, you know, your, your normal, normal power with renewables through wind, through solar, and we've started those, um, those feasibilities on a large scale. Um, we've obviously got some behind the meter works we've implemented already uh, on a smaller pilot scale. Um, but fundamentally here in Kalgoorlie, given that we've acquired the Goldfields power system, we are connected to the grid, we have a lot of options and we're looking at it as a multi-decade uh, point of view. So when we consider things like an expanded processing capacity, uh, we've put out the pre-feasibility work uh, on the Fimiston mill expansion to take it from 13 to 24 million tonnes per annum. 
the options there is that we can actually increase the throughput and ultimately reduce the emissions um, from today's state anyway, because, and it actually helps with the economics of it. So key, key to this is absolutely reducing emissions uh, for our business, but it absolutely flows through reducing unit costs uh, on, on escalation that's happening across energy as well. So it's a key part to our business metrics. So look, in summary today, um, very pleased uh, with what we've delivered in the year that's been. Um, you know, to really highlight again, we've got a, a really simple and clear value generating strategy. Um, we're a responsible producer and we take, don't take that lightly. Um, the profitable organic growth is key. We have everything we need in our own control uh, and we're able to, to have a lot of levers and, and uh, diversification of how we deliver that across the journey. We are already generating very strong cash flows that services our dividends, our organic growth, that services our exploration efforts, uh, and we still have surplus um, cash um, beyond that. The, uh, the world-class assets I speak about, um, it's important, it's deliberate, it's a simplified portfolio, um, and it is. It's one metal, we're gold. It's in two countries that are tier one, three production centres, so we, we believe it's quite compact and simple to manage and oversee. And ultimately, that will result in, the, in sustainable generating uh, of, of those shareholder returns that everyone has come to diggers and dealers to, to try and find the next gem. Uh, we're a big one, we're right here. Go to the lookout and uh, be pleased to speak with you uh, after this. Thanks very much. We, we do have time for questions. So is there any questions from the floor? No, we have one online. So, um, Stu, given the state of your balance sheet, how are you thinking about capital management? This question comes up a lot. Uh, it's not through mergers and acquisitions, I'll give you that, and um, conversations that start around share buybacks, which has been the question, um, are considered. But ultimately, we're always looking for the best returns for shareholders. We also see great opportunities organically to reinvest that capital and we've demonstrated the discipline to generate returns from that. So that those things come into the equation in this environment uh, and that we all consider, but you can already see that it's not trading off one against the other, it's around you know, a balance between each of those. Excellent, is there any more questions? No, we'll leave it there. Thanks a lot, Stu. Thanks very much.